one of the key challenges though that we have in healthcare, particularly healthcare adoption of new innovations, new treatments, new research findings, it takes on average 17 years for those to hit widespread clinical practice. And one of the things I want to remind us all, and I know we know this, that 17 year timeline is separate from regulatory approvals, uh, trials, and, and all the sort of required scientific work that we need to do. This is purely dissemination into the clinical realm and for that to be adopted. Bottom line is that is unacceptable. We need to figure out a better way, but it is symptomatic of our system and how complex our system is and how fragmented our system is. We're all functioning inside these environments where we think that there's this invisible set of rules that we can't break, right? And we, we just get very used to them. And it doesn't mean that they're actually unbreakable. It just means we've gotten used to them. Because on the one hand, provinces have taken all different approaches, meaning they now have different areas of strength. So let's build off each other's strengths and work together. Um, and then on the downside of that, I get frustrated when I see every province having to solve the same problem at the same time, and there's inefficiencies in that. So if we could share our approaches, um, if we could share the planning, if we could uh, invite others in to perhaps help us with their area of strength, uh, I, I think we would be building the transformed health system that we're all really striving for that much faster. So oh, tech founders, tech innovators, think really carefully about what you mean by health when you're trying to do work in health. I work in health promotion and public health and I'm a health geographer by training. We really understand health as something that is improved when we have more control over the conditions for our health and well-being. So is the work you're doing helping people or communities have more control over the things that we really know are important for their health and well-being, whether that's their health care and clinical decision making um, or more fundamental determinants like their access to housing or income or their ability to address discrimination or colonial inheritances? So we do have lots of data out there. Um, what we don't have is information, right? Turning the data into information that can be usefully used to either improve those individual experiences or um, the work at a population or system level. And, and so what that means is one, the data have to come in in ways that are interoperable, that, you know, they can be exchanged. They have to have common definitions and common standards. And then the second area, standards is key, but the second area is of course, the role of technology in managing data burden. Another panelist also talked about the proliferation of, of, of content and data in EMRs. Well, we see that in the system generally. And there are opportunities uh, for us to, first of all, rationalize data, collect once, use often, but to also take advantage of things like sort of data integration and data linkage. Now more than ever, what we're seeing um, we understand that mental and physical health are connected, right? And that, um, you know, if we're passively analyzing sessions, you know, whether it be using forms of NLP or linguistic cues, coupled with, you know, maybe wearable data, we can make more, we can get better information on the patient and help uh, inform them on some of the, um, you know, some of the things they can do to improve their health. And I think everyone has a certain amount of data shame. You know, my data is not quite ready. It's not quite as structured. It's not quite as pretty as it should be. <laughs> and, and it's not quite ready for, for prime time. But you know what, we got to get past that and, and just get on with doing and, and seeing and, and it, you know, it might fail. It might fail. But, um, you know, that's going to think advance us.